Hello and welcome back to my channel, The Flute Nerd, and another edition of Frequently Asked Fluty Questions. In this series, I try to answer some of your questions about the flute and generally get to nerd out about this instrument. I mean, it sort of comes with the name, you know. This month's question is, why are high note fingerings so difficult? I'm so glad you asked this one because this is one of my favorite topics to talk about. It combines science and math and is just generally fascinating. So let's jump in. The third and fourth octave on the flute is a constant source of headaches. Trying to find the perfect balance between air speed and air direction while trying also not to lose the resonance of the sound is something we will always be working on. It doesn't matter how good you get. But as we climb higher and higher, you might have noticed that it's not just the sound production that's difficult. Those fingerings can be diabolical. So today I'm going to talk specifically about why the fingerings of the high register are a little bit more complicated than the lower stuff, and I'll also offer a few exercises that you can take into your own practice that will hopefully help you feel a little bit more comfortable with them. But first, let's have a look at the mechanics of how the flute makes a sound. This is the fun geeky part, and while it will feel like a little bit of a tangent, it is quite important to understanding what's going on. The flute uses a process called oscillation. When a flute player blows across the embouchure hole, a vibrating column of the air moves down the body of the flute, and that is what produces the sound that we hear. The pitch of that sound is determined by the length of the column of air, which we manipulate as the player by opening or closing the keys of the body. But, and this is the cool part, when we're playing a note, we're not producing a single sound wave. Instead, the sound we hear is rich with layers of overtones or resonating frequencies that flesh out that tone. The lower the note, the richer the series of overtones or harmonics. So what are harmonics? I could talk for hours and probably will in a future video, let's face it, about how fascinating harmonics are. There's a lot of maths and science and physics involved and it just blows my mind. Music is a beautiful, culturally constructed art form, but it's also science. But I digress. The series of overtones that we hear is actually a very precise order of notes based on the fundamental or the lowest note of the series. And each of these notes relate to each other in very precise mathematical ways. I'm not going to go into the mathematics of how these notes are related to each other in this specific video, but it's all to do with the ratio of the sound waves to each other. All we need to know for today is that if you take the lowest note of a harmonic series, also called a fundamental, and overblow it on the flute, you can hit a series of higher notes that are in a very specific order on top of that original note. The first note you'll hear is a sounding octave above that fundamental. From there, the space between each subsequent overtone gets smaller and smaller and smaller. For example, if we play a low C on the flute and overblow, it is possible for us to hear the C above that, the G, the C, an E, a G, a B flat, and a C. If you're familiar with your C major scale, you'll probably recognize these notes as the tonic, an octave higher, the fifth, the tonic, the third, the fifth, the flat seven, and the tonic. This series will be the same no matter what fundamental note you play. You should be able to theoretically play each one of those scale degrees on any fundamental, but in practice, obviously, the higher that fundamental note goes, the higher harmonics drop off as they are a bit too difficult for us to hit. But for example, if we were to play a low D, you should theoretically be able to play a D, A, D, F sharp, a, C natural, D. But in practice, we can really only hit the first five harmonics, the D, A, D, F sharp, A. So why is this important? The only notes that act as a fundamental on the flute are our low register. So a low C or low B if you have a low B foot, all the way up to an E flat at the top of the staff. Every other note that we can play on the flute is either one of those upper harmonics or a modified fingering of one of those harmonics, and I'll explain later what I mean by that. The easiest notes to see this effect are our middle registers, so from the E to a high C sharp. The low and middle fingerings are exactly the same. We simply overblow that original fundamental and hit the first harmonic, which is a sounding octave. Things get more interesting once we hit the high register at a D and above. 
We are still using our harmonic fingerings to get these notes out, but by the time we hit D and above, we start modifying those fingerings to help with the ease of play and intonation. For example, let's take a third octave D. Its fingering is actually quite different than the lower fingerings. But take a close look at that D fingering. Does it look like something else? That's right, it kind of looks like a G. And think about it this way, if we played that low G fundamental and played the second harmonic, we would hear a sounding fifth, which in this case would be our third octave D. Try playing that harmonic and then lifting the first finger of your left hand to hear how that clears up the sound a bit. Our third and fourth registers are full of these modified fingerings. For example, our high G is just a vented version of our low G fundamental made by lifting the thumb. The high E flat fingering is a vented version of our lowest E flat fundamental, which is made by venting with the G sharp key. And in some of these fingerings, you can start to see how they're also related to other fundamentals. For example, if you take our high E fingering, you can see how it's just another vented version of our low E. But if you start licking a little bit harder, you can realize that it's also very similar to an A. And if we played the A harmonic series, this E would be the second sounding harmonic. So now that we can see that all our high note fingerings are just modified versions of our low note fingerings, it all starts to make sense about why these are a little bit more complicated. As we play an ordered series of fundamental notes, the fingerings make intuitive sense. As we go down, we close fingers, and as we come up, we progressively lift fingers. But because high notes are modified versions of those fingerings, often using a vented finger, or sometimes not even being related to consecutive fundamentals, you can see why these fingerings get a bit less intuitive. And to make matters worse, when we're using these vented fingerings, it often means we end up with what's called forked fingerings. For example, a high F would be considered a forked fingering with alternating down and up fingers. What this means is we often end up having to swap fingers, so moving fingers up and down at the same time, which can be extremely difficult if you're trying to go quite fast. Great, so now you know why high note fingerings are so bad, but Let's give you a few exercises that can hopefully help you in your own practice and make you feel a little bit more comfortable with them. First thing is to practice slowly. I know I have a tendency to say this a lot, but remember that these fingerings are unintuitive. So all of that excellent muscle memory you've worked on for those lower fundamental notes is not going to apply for these higher registers. You still need to build that muscle memory. When you're building your muscle memory, try not to allow your fingers to find the notes. And by that, I mean move around trying to, oh, there it is. By doing that, you're actually going to practice in that finding movement between notes. We just want smooth movement from one note exactly to where the fingers need to go for the next note. So hold down one note and think about it until you know exactly where those fingers need to go for the next note. Practice scales and scale patterns in small chunks. This will allow your brain to focus on the specific fingerings you struggle with. Not all of those fingerings are going to be ones that trip you up, so there's no need to always start at the beginning of a scale or a pattern. So for example, you don't always need to start at the beginning of an A major scale if it's just your F sharp, G sharp, A at the top octave that you struggle with. Instead, just focus on the change between those three notes. conscious of balance changes. Because our fingerings are often swapping between these vented fingerings in the high register, it means that these naturally are a bit more unstable than the low register. So this means we need to be super conscious of our posture. Hold the flute with the correct balance points so that your fingers are able to just dance over the keys rather than taking on any weight of the flute. Watch yourself in a mirror when you practice these notes looking for movement of your flute or wrist, which would suggest a balance issue. In that example, you could see that my left wrist was moving, which means that my balance probably wasn't right between my left knuckle, my thumb, and my first finger. 
Once I find that balance, I should be able to play those notes without too much movement in my wrist. So there you have it. Now you not only know why these fingerings are so difficult, but you hopefully have a few exercises you can take into your own practice to make them easier. And if you found this video helpful, please do hit that like button and share widely to all of your flute nerd friends. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and hit that bell to make sure that you receive notifications about my latest videos. Do you have any burning questions about the flute? If so, please do drop me a comment below and I will try to get around to it in a future edition of my frequently asked flutey questions. In the meantime, happy fluting!